Hey there, welcome to part three. I did not plan on making a third video, but I realized that there was a portion of the video editing that I left out when I did my final on the video. And a couple people had asked me how I got the, uh, the sender back into the boat and what I ended up with as far as the two-part epoxy and, and the mess and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this little intro on it and I'm gonna let that video roll right behind this and then you guys can see exactly what I ended up with as far as the mess that was left behind that I had to clean up and getting the riv nuts inside there and, and compressing them down and uh, getting the actual seal in there and then what the final end result looked like after I had my repair done. So we're gonna roll it. Okay, now that you've had the rundown on exactly what I ran into and how I tested it, let me show you exactly what this guy left me with. Here's the two-part epoxy, and I'll do a little zoom in here so you can get an idea how bad this is. You can see where the sending unit was pressed deep down inside, and who knows how much of this stuff fell into the tank, but basically it just doesn't hold, and it's a terrible seal. And that's why when I sprayed it with the soap and water, you could see bubbles coming out of it. I'll skip to the next picture here and give you a showing of the top side. Again, we're looking at the same thing. I'll zoom in again so you can get a closer look at what's going on here. But it just looks crusty and it's just not the right way to do it. So I cleaned it up and took everything apart and found out that underneath there's an array of different holes. I'm not sure if he had screws in here ever after the original sender failed, but you can tell that this is what they were going for was just stuff it in there, fill the holes, hopefully it'll bite, and we'll just move on from there. So as you can see, what I did on the top left here was I found a suitable, what they call a crush nut or a nut plate, and these are available on Amazon. I bought a whole kit uh, with a couple different sizes in there, and then what I do is instead of buying the $50 tool to crush these, because they're aluminum, it doesn't take a lot to actually get these nut plates to lock down, I went and bought a bolt and a nut, and all you have to do is just push it down and in and run the nut down flat. You can see I have a little washer in there that holds a separation between the nut plate and the nut so that the nut won't tear up the actual face of the nut plate. And you just turn that nut plate until it snugs up. You put a wrench on the top and hold it, twist the nut until the bottom pulls up, and voila, you have five nut plates. I found out that rotating the sender inside the top of the tank that these were the holes that lined up and that's where I decided to go find these nut plates instead of going and drilling new holes. Um, the holes that you see here do have some crud in them and I want to make a point to say that I clean these up by putting my hand underneath with a wet rag, clean these holes up so these holes were all nice and clean. I got a factory seal kit for the sender on Amazon by looking up the manufacturer. I actually bought two because they were only like six or seven dollars a pop. So it's actually a true seal and the original factory nuts that go to that sender. Bolted it up and I bought some Permatex uh, fuel safe gasket maker, sealed it all up, and this is what I ended up with. So after everything was done, we got a pretty nasty rainstorm and luckily for me, everything was cured. I didn't realize that there was a divot in the top of my tank that was allowing the water to come in. So this is what it looked like after I was done. I was very pleased to know that there wouldn't be any more water going back into that tank.